You know what bothers me? For some reason, all our fans seem to think that we're gay. Now, I, I thought we made it pretty obvious in all our previous videos. We're just two average, straight friends. But, but look, we, we don't want to disappoint all our fans. You've been watching us all this time. Maybe, maybe you know us better than we do. So, we're going to try our best to become homosexuals just for you. And we know exactly where we'd have to go to make that happen. Why else would you want to have two dudes or two women kissing in a Disney film? It's about making your kids gay. Gay agenda and queerness and uh, putting it in movies and cartoons. They're being fed these messages over and over. In every episode now, they're going to have Mickey and Pluto going at it. So this is a true wake-up call to parents that they can't trust the things that they used to be able to trust. You heard it. Disney is making kids gay. So if we wanted to be gay, we'd have to catch the first plane to America and go to Disneyland, the gayest place on earth. And luckily, we had the help of two Americans, both of whom were married to women, which inevitably makes a lot of straight men start having second thoughts about their heterosexuality. Wait, but these things are enormous. If these don't make you gay, they're just giant cocks. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to sit on it. Yeah. Disneyland is making us gay. That's not even Disneyland. That's oh, just, really? That's just the introduction to Orlando. Just Orlando's turning people gay. Look, Kevin's so distracted by the giant cock, he can't even drive. He's so horny, he can't drive. <laughs> so we all arrived at Disney, and we were ready to start our new lives as gay. Gay men. But it was kind of hard to get in. The entrance was blocked by like hundreds of protesters. We assumed people would be upset because we came at a very delicate time. You know, every flag was at half mast. This was the week that the US exceeded 1 million deaths from COVID. But it turns out that wasn't what they were angry about. So what seems to be happening is that Disney has made these people's kids gay and, and they're not happy about it. And they all came to Disney World to cast some kind of anti-gay spell on Mickey Mouse. And I want us to lift up our hands and we're going to do this Old Testament style. One, two, three, give it up! Yeah. 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 God, the energy was contagious. I, I just couldn't help but join in. They, they worked us up so well. I honestly hated Mickey for a minute there. Well, not all Mickeys. I mean, there was a, there was a heterosexual MAGA Mickey who was apparently on our side. Take your Bible great again. <laughs> we were about to have some good old-fashioned fun and apparently get some sweet discounts too. We're going to do a Jesus march down the street in front of the macaroni grill. We're going to have a worship throwdown, Woo! and the Macaroni Grill uh, manager already came out and, and welcomed us and gave us $50. Oh, macaroni Grill! Right. Now, I've never done a Jesus march before, but it turns out it's actually pretty easy to do. You, you just got to remember one word. Jesus! 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 To the untrained eye, this looks a bit silly, maybe even delusional, but I quickly became convinced of the magical power of the Jesus March. You see, last year during the BLM protest, the governor of Florida made a law that made it legal to run protesters over if they obstruct traffic. But these people were clearly protected by God, like no car could stop them. And we thought the Jesus Walk was a perfect time to start talking to people. What do you think of the event so far? Uh, I think it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. I'm glad I drove from Myrtle Beach. From, I live in Atlanta, outside of Atlanta and I was at the Great Awakening in Myrtle Beach when he spoke. And I was like, I gotta be there. So I have slept in my car for three, four nights and came here because this is amazing. How many miles is that? I'll be honest, I felt a bit out of my depth here. Things were getting really weird, but that was nothing. As soon as we got to the Macaroni Grill car park, things got even weirder. A man comes out with some kind of medieval horn and everyone goes wild. People were speaking in tongues, gyrating on the ground. This shit was sure to scare even the most determined homosexual. Honestly, I was struggling to fit in here, but luckily the leaders tell you exactly what words to shout. That's great! You want to lay it all on the line. Look at your neighbor and say, don't get soft. Go get soft. Apparently not everyone at the protest was shouting correctly and the leaders could tell, you know. It, it turns out we had something called a Jezebel among us. We're fighting against Jezebel and she's already been destroyed and she can be destroyed again. Wake up, Jake! 
Wake up! Disney is approximately one kilometer away from this macaroni grill car park, but somehow Jezebel's satanic energy got in here, and then the man on the stage spotted it inside the mind of one of the women in the audience. Come on, there's a lady here. There's a lady here. Come on, come on, come on. So come everyone on. had to crowd around and put their arms on her head to exercise the spirit of Jezebel. We're destroying Jezebel in the body of Christ right now. I want people to get around and start praying. Just get around them right now. I had never seen an exorcism before. I mean, don't get me wrong, it was confronting, but I did get a bit excited witnessing Christian magic for the first time. What are we doing here today? Uh, we're just basically here to tell Disney we're just tired. I mean, just tired of them trying to indoctrinate our children. They want to brainwash them early enough that they it, it becomes truth for them, the, the gay religion. They have a not-so-secret gay agenda to uh, propose and indoctrinate on little children. What's their, what's their indoctrination look like? How do we spot it? It's just, I mean, it's just like little subliminal things that they'll put into their movies. When you oh. look at the movies, really there's just the subtle things about solutions. magic. Well, the most recent one that I've seen, um, Enchanto, I think yeah. that's what it's called. It's got a lot of sorcery. Sorcery. Yeah. And then when you think that Walt Disney was a warlock. Yeah, that, that's crazy. It's I like, mean, really? All the Disney movies really have some yeah, sort of yeah. sorcery, things of that sort in there. That is very strange. I mean, it goes completely against the Bible as well. Absolutely. It's like magic, warlocks. You, you got a shirt that says demon killer. What's, yeah. the, what's the best way to kill a demon? Oh, uh, prayer. Jesus Christ going in the spirit. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, 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 it's by the spirit of God. It's not through our strength. It's by the spirit of God. It's, it's the spirit of God that's, that kills a demon. It's the spirit of God. So Disney was using sorcery to make their kids gay. I mean, it seemed believable enough, but I wanted to know why. Why are they doing it? Like, what do they want from the kids? So, I mean, I think, I think there's just a, a greater agenda to uh, world control, mind control, separating the child from the parent. Uh, George Orwell talked about that. Why are they doing this? You know, to I, destroy our country. Destroy our country. Yeah. To destroy America. Even the public school system here is, is getting vile. What, what are the teachers doing in the schools here? Oh, wow. Well, basically what Disney's doing, they're, they're basically grooming our children. And I have yeah. a 13-year-old daughter that I actually pulled her out of public school. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, and she's been homeschooled for three years now. We've actually taken our kids out of public school. Wow. Um, I mean, it's just, it's not right. I mean, kids are kids. Let them be kids. Yeah. These people are so committed to letting kids be kids that every single parent we spoke to has yanked their kids away from all the other kids and schooled them at home. Now, I'm obviously not a child, but I'm pretty sure all the homeschool kids who were brought to this event by their parents were pretty grateful to be in the macaroni grill car park, listening to this adult tell them what to think, you know, instead of being indoctrinated at Disneyland. And it starts with corporations indoctrinating kids at an early age. What is wrong with these people? Well, it's all well and good for the homeschooled kids, but what about the kids who are already gay? What happens to them? You know, they're kids, they've watched Disney, they've gone to public schools, they've, you know, they're now, they're, 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 they're gay. Like, what, think, what do they do? Uh, we just a prayer. God's going to come down and deal with these people. People would talk about God dealing with the homosexuals, but it's hard to imagine what they meant by that. But the fire of the Holy Spirit will come right now like a mighty rush of fire and will destroy any agenda, any demonic agenda. It turns out this is their leader, Sean Foy. Now this is a guy who knows how to get everyone excited. Come on, we want everybody in the macaroni grill to hear us tonight. Woo! He's the straightest man in the entire protest. There's not a gay bone in this man's body. He's just a heterosexual man who has heterosexual sex with his blonde wife and makes blonde children. And he's famous for making enormous Christian concerts during COVID. In defiance of state orders to prevent the spread of the coronavirus, they came to see a controversial worship leader and political activist. Last night we gathered thousands of people that, that came together, the church showed up. Now, I didn't realize this, but it turns out that COVID public health orders and Disney's homosexual agenda are actually linked. With the shutdowns, they groomed the children back then because they had to be masked, they had to be six feet apart. So yes. that was just the beginning. And then anything else would be okay. Like you could be, you know, you could be a girl today. You could be a pronoun today. Because we will no longer wear masks. We watch Australia, we watch the world. We know what's going on and we're awake and we're not going back to sleep. This is pretty impressive. These people seem to know a lot more about Australia than we did. They were forced jabbing children. 
Well, I personally didn't didn't see it. Have you looked at the stats yeah. in your country? It's because we're getting we're getting your stats here. To me, it kind of I mean it is like Nazi Germany. Little kids that were like tackled by the police and injected on the spot. I mean, it's just that it really seemed like true yeah. communism. I even heard that you guys can't grow gardens. So when they ask for a vaccine card, the first thing I think of is like, oh, do I need to show my yellow star? Now, if you ask me, none of that stuff actually happened, but I do honestly admire their dedication to freedom and bodily autonomy. We have the freedom here to not take the jab. The freedom here to say, you know, it's a medical procedure. I don't, I don't want to be a part of, you know, I, it's my body. My body, my choice. They're, they're not even allowed to ask. Well, they're not allowed to ask if you're vaccinated. Although their commitment to my body, my choice only went so far, especially now that abortion is illegal in Florida. I mean, I'm pro-life. We don't want we don't abortion. Want There's no black and white. What would happen if someone, if someone, let's say, was to get an abortion in a state? Like, would they, would they just go to jail? Like, what's the? Um, yeah, if you could detect a heartbeat in that child, um, that kill, uh, you know, aborting after that point would be um, illegal. And yeah, so right. that's really, really great just to get some of those rights back to the unborn because they deserve them. Look, no offense to the Christians, but we didn't get a lot out of these interviews. If we want to get to the bottom of this, we'd have to go about it scientifically. We're going to have to go to Disney to find out once and for all if it'll make us gay. And remember, we're doing this for you. With the protest over, getting into Disney World was easy, but finding our way around was almost impossible. I swear we didn't we well, we just come down on this road. Uh, but then we, we went straight, so we had to do like a little... Why the hell is this place so enormous? Well, it turns out back in the 40s, the working conditions at Disney were incredibly exploitative and there was this massive animator strike. Now, don't let the cute cartoon signs fool you. Walt Disney was a slave driver and they all wished he was dead. And he'd rather die than negotiate with his animation slaves. But the US government stepped in and said, come on, Walt, you're causing a scene here. You're going to have to negotiate with your employees. And Walt gave up and negotiated a better deal for his workers. Yeah, this time he was beaten. But Walt thought to himself, if I had my own country, no one could tell me how I had to treat my workers. And that's when he came up with Epcot. Spelled E-P-C-O-T. Experimental Prototype Community of Tomorrow. He wanted to build a giant corporate controlled society with mass surveillance, no unions, no voting, no retirement, and run solely by Walt Disney. So he bought up 25,000 acres of land in Florida and struck a deal with the government, essentially giving Disney full control of his own tiny country within the USA. Now, I know what you're thinking. Buying heaps of land and making a corporate-owned dystopia is all well and good for Disney, but what about me? How do I get to be lord of my own evil little kingdom? Well, thanks to this video sponsor, Established Titles, you can be a lord right now. You can buy at least one square foot of land on a private estate in Scotland, and thanks to some archaic Scottish law, technically, that makes you a lord. No, for real, you get an official certificate with a crest, and you can officially change your name on your credit card or your plane ticket. They tell you exactly where your land is, and it's not useless land either. You could probably grow a couple of turnips if you use that square foot correctly, or you could milk about 3% of a cow there. But not just that, established titles teamed up with One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future, and they plant a tree with every order. It makes an amazing last minute gift for a friend or maybe a gay couple that wants some intimate plots right next to each other. And if you use the code boy boy, you get an additional 10% off. So go become a lord now. In fact, if you buy 1 billion and 89 million of these plots, you could be as powerful as Walt Disney himself. There's enough land here to hold all the ideas and plans we could possibly imagine. Now, luckily for us, Walt Disney died and his successors scrapped the creepy future city, but kept Disney World's bizarre status as one of the world's only corporate owned countries. They pay no taxes. They have their own laws, their own private fire and electricity services, even their own private police force. Yeah, no, they got an actual prison. That is if you find yourself here, it's because you did something real naughty. <laughs> And it's not just prisons. We even had to pass Disney Migration and Customs to get in. We just got um, stopped by Disney Police. And now we're going to get, I guess, Disney Strip Search. I mean, I hope they make it fun. <laughs> it's going to be the funnest strip search on Earth. <laughs> Can I record the process, please? Oh, sorry, Thank sorry. You. Always uh, you two who get secondary screening. Why? Wow. No, it's because it's because we don't look gay enough. Uh, I, I presume just because I have a gun in my bag. Oh, uh, <laughs> wow! Yeah. Did they take it? I'll do it no, Can no. They just wanted to make sure that you had enough ammo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Here you go, sir. Have a good day. We finally made it past the funnest biometric data scanner on earth, and we made it in. And we're finally ready to test out if Disneyland can make us gay. 
we decided to stay at the Swan Hotel, named after the gayest creature in the animal kingdom. And straight off the bat, the Christians were right. Disney does seem to be making us gay here. The accommodation is so prohibitively expensive that you have no choice but to share a bed with all the boys. But it's morning time and the experiment continues. Now, just because we're trying to radically alter our sexuality in one day, doesn't mean we're reckless maniacs. We're gonna be outdoors all day, so we've gotta be sun safe. <laughs> now, we were only Disney for about half an hour at this point, and things were getting a lot woker than we expected. Oh, how impressive is this, guys? It's like the only city in America that has a mass public transport system. <laughs> <laughs> this it looks is... good. Look how reliable it is. But I mean, that's, that's practically communism, right? That's, it Disney. Is. that's, that's one step towards yeah. making everyone gay. We call, me, we call it the Kami Gondola. Hi, guys. The Kami Dola. The coconut um, guy's coming on to me. We, everyone just says hello to you. Every man and they, just but says They don't hi. say hello, they go, hello. They get reprimanded if they don't. Hello. Now, I thought these brightly dressed flamboyant men were obviously flirting with us, but it turns out they might not actually be gay. They just get fired if they don't smile at park visitors. See, every part of their lives is controlled here. You can't take any photos or talk about your job on social media. They have mandated haircut laws. They control your fingernail length, the underwear you wear. They even choose a new name for you. And it's one of the most surveilled areas on earth, so the mouse will know if you snuck your own underpants into work. Uh, you know, at least after a long day of authoritarian scrutiny and forced smiling, you can get home and relax. But more realistically, you'll be sleeping in your car because they earn so little that 11% of Disney employees are currently homeless. So these poor workers get fired if they don't smile, but also 43% of them can't even afford dental care. I, I don't know what's going on here. You know, they definitely weren't making us gay, but they were making us cry. I, I don't worry, I, maybe it'll get gayer. On to the main attraction. Wait, dude, I understand what they're talking about. They're literally promoting bestiality. Yeah, this is, uh, this is way too radical for my taste. The spectacle was pretty weird and confronting, but there wasn't anything particularly gay about it. So we decided to take matters into our own hands. Wait, do you want to kiss in front of the Disney castle? Of course. Is that Walt Disney? Yeah. yeah. I like how this man turned around like he was like, yes. <laughs> yes, I am. So we're getting ready for our first kiss and it has to be perfectly framed to make sure Disney can work its magic. And I think we got it. I'll be honest, kissing Alex wasn't that bad, but it also wasn't particularly arousing either. We're going to need much more evidence for this to be conclusive. Yeah, I think we've got to test to see if the food's gay here. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't look very gay. Mine I mean, doesn't look gay either. Does it taste gay? Doesn't taste very gay. Should we should we try kissing? How was that? I didn't like that. It was better than when we did it in the sun. But no, I don't think the, I don't think the food's very gay here. No. If anything, the food at Disney was aggressively straight. That's what a vagina looks like, William. Yeah, I think, yeah, we, have, I think we accidentally ordered the straight ones. Yeah. These are the, the ones that are lesbians are meant to eat. I'm starting to feel like Disneyland isn't making us any gayer, but we're not quitters. We don't give up so easily. Look, we were told that Disney grooms kids, right? So I'm sure if we go on a kid's ride, we'll see it for ourselves. So we chose Small World, a ride full of animatronic children from around the world. Just a, just a simple kid's ride about Disney and international children. What, what could go wrong? Let's not talk about Small World ever again, okay? Uh, luckily, there are so many other exotic parts of Disneyland to take our minds off it. I think we're in, we're in mystical Syria or, or Iraq or something. This is, what's this what place called? Yeah, you got it, it's Iraq. It says here this is counterinsurgency land. Counterinsurgency land, sick. It's sick. You get to kill Osama Bin Laden at the end of the ride. Go blow up some weddings. Yeah, do it. Honestly, at this point, we were running out of hope that we'd ever become gay, but we realized we somehow missed the sexiest part of the map. We had to go to Squirt Mountain. Okay, let's go to Squirt Mountain. Squirt Mountain. Kevin, have you ever been on Squirt Mountain? We're at Squirt Mountain. 
Oh, this is quite. Oh, oh my god, what the hell was that? Did you catch that on camera? It got all over the camera. <laughs> that was so sexual. The camel just spat in my mouth. Squirt mountain, squirt mountain, squirt mountain, squirt mountain. Oh, it's wet. Surely, if we kiss on the big drop on Squirt Mountain, we will feel Disney's satanic gay sorcery. The problem is that we could never really tell when the big drop was coming, so we just ended up kissing on all the drops, and this is where Disney's gay spell actually started working. What? Is the fact that when I closed my eyes and kissed him, I almost forgot that we were about to do a massive drop. It made me feel more comfortable. Yeah, it made me feel a bit more comfortable as well. Maybe there is some truth to this. Maybe... <laughs> Alright, now I'm scared again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. Now this kiss, this kiss was different. It, it wasn't like any, any of the other kisses. As soon as we touched lips, the, the screaming stopped. We were strapped into this steel contraption, hurtling down to earth, but, but in my mind, we were just gently floating, higher and higher and higher. We must have floated too high because tragedy struck. Oh, there's a chance it might hit us. Yeah, yeah it's good. Gonna... Well. Yeah, we're gonna get struck by lightning. Oh god, my it's god. Kiss. This is what happens when you kiss. Wow. You've angered <laughs> god, very much. Right, we, just make we were a, warned. Make a, we we... Just make a run for it. Yeah. As we were running through the rain, I realized this day had been a big disappointment. I mean, apart from that brief moment on Squirt Mountain, we didn't feel any gayer at all. We were just tired and wet and Alex got a nasty beard rash. I mean, the cushions were right in a sense that Disneyland is a demonic hellscape, but it definitely didn't make us gay. But these conservatives believe this shit with all their heart, like so much so that after 60 years, Florida's Republican governor Ron DeSantis is officially revoking Disney World's status as an unaccountable, unregulated corporate country. This state is governed by the interests of the people of the state of Florida. It is not based on the demands of California corporate executives. Now don't get me wrong, this is an amazing move and there are a million good reasons to do this, but the conservatives chose the only insane reason for doing it. I, I, I don't get it, like do, do we cheer for DeSantis? Do, do we defend Disney? There's only really one thing I know I want to do right now. All right, then I put close together. Yep. And then go along with this way, friend. Right. All of us are right there. Are you exhausted? One, two, three.